Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. Today, I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with my uh, two-hand bone shatter jug progress. We are cruising very smoothly, level 87. Still no deaths. Um, before I type this, I do have two actual deaths, but they're not real. First death was dying on Twilight Strand because I spiked to uh, 170,000 latency. And the second death was because I thought that I could potentially run reflect maps with like... 40,000 armor and six endurance charges. Spoiler, don't try to run Fizz Reflect. Um, I even actually tried to run with uh, Soul of Yugle and uh, it did not matter. Anyway, though, to give you guys an update on the character, um, here's my current skill tree. So uh, the only real things I've done, I'm not sure what I was on yesterday, but uh, I decided to ditch these stun nodes because my stun is actually already overkill. Um, by overkill, I mean like every rare I hit is permastunned by a long shot, even bosses. The problem is if your stun is too high and you stun a boss with your regular whack, you're going to stun it for a very small amount of time, which then triggers an invulnerability phase to being stunned, meaning your ruthless proc will not like actually stun. You'll still get the damage from ruthless, but you won't get the... Uh, ruthless blows with supported skills have a base stun of 0 0.8 that then gets multiplied or increased by your stun duration um, so actually not going overkill on your stun is very important um, so I have dropped this wheel and instead I picked up this wheel here which basically is giving me some attack speed but more importantly um, I'm testing out all damage with scepters inflicts chill I don't really know if I care for this at all. I, I will probably switch it to Culling Strike. I was just really curious to see how the chill would work. Um, and then I think I might drop Endurance Charge stacking and just stick with five Endurance Charges instead and just keep this one. Uh, I'm, I'm basically looking at this section here and trying to figure out if I would rather path one, two, three, and then grab Wrecking Ball. Maybe Executioner, but definitely repping, Wrecking Ball because I didn't realize that um, when I first originally started playing, you know, when I played stun characters, I always thought they would like hit slower, but stun lock, but we're at the point in PoE where you can hit very fast and stun lock and hitting very fast is more survivability with jug specifically because of, um, uh, da -da 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 here we go because of unbreakable. We've also ascended to Uber lab and I picked up unstoppable. I did want to get unrelenting, but I feel so tanky already. And uh, when we go Spell Suppression, I don't think we're going to need Unrelenting. Um, the only Spell Suppression wheel we're going to grab is this, so Spell Suppression will be a bit difficult to get I set up. Um, I currently have like a tab here that I'm trying to work on Spell Suppression gear. With that being said though, uh, we're not going to talk too much about that. This is a weapon I ended up getting via Harvest. So I actually did, I've been doing Reforge Speed on my weapons. And Reforge Speed I think guarantees attack speed and I got very lucky with hitting a T3 hybrid and a T2 flat fizz, and then used Harvest's bench to divine to get uh, better rolls on my outcomes. And now that I have done a little bit of betrayal, I can actually put a better mod on here, which is uh, higher physical, but also blind. And blind will be very good because we don't have a lot of evasion right now. We have 3K, but I have the ability to scale that. Then there's blind on top of that. Um, yeah, let's get started into a map. So I'm currently only running like T8, T9 maps. Uh, that's all I have on my Atlas. So this one has a Monsters Have Endurance Charge on hit, uh, which gives them physical mitigation. And then uh, the other thing I have incorporated is I am running now a Pride Divine Blessing setup. But the only time I ever need to run Pride is like the boss. And I mean, that's pretty much about it. Ooh, acceleration train. Okay. I guess I could do it right here. Here we go. Let's see. Oh, that's a scary chaos degen right there. Oh, I also modified my links a little bit, and I don't know if I like this, but I feel like I do way more damage. So previously, uh, people in my chat told me that you should run rage support because it's like one of the best damage supports you can get, especially if you can generate rage. But I don't know, man. I plugged in melee physical damage um, instead of rage, and it feels like my damage is way higher. 
the only thing is sometimes i don't consistently generate rage when i'm mapping like you can see i have it right now and the only reason i don't consistently generate it is because i one shot oh, one shot sorry one shot the pack thus not really taking any damage or uh properly getting my warlord's mark set up so basically i have like a cast one damage taken warlord's mark with uh cast one damage taken warlord's mark and then i also have enduring uh sorry not enduring cry uh molten shell on that setup and since bone shatter does self damage it actually triggers that but it doesn't really trigger it very often it ooh, it specifically does not trigger the uh the warlord's mark super often if i'm just one shotting the pack the molten shell still goes off like fine oh is this boss yeah boss is over here okay so we'll just pop our divine blessing okay let's go so one other thing if you just saw there i took like a big hit of damage on the lightning mirage uh that would be because I'm gonna go full reduced effective shock, so I need to get a ring prefix. So I'm trying to get a new ring right now to craft the uh, last remaining part of reduced effective shock. So unstoppable makes me immune to like temp chains, chill, freeze, all the random slow effects. I'll have the um, the pantheon will assist me in the shock immunity. One other thing that's really nice is uh, because we are precise technique, we need to make it so that our accuracy is always above our life pool, which can be a little tricky to manage uh, since I don't have many sources of percent increased accuracy. However, I may try doing a little bit of strength stacking potentially to see if I can get this number higher or I'll just have to get better gear. Another cool thing about the Pantheon though is the reduced effective shock doubles with the pantheon i would want anyway which is you cannot be blinded because think about running a map with monsters blind on hit a mob hits you it blinds you it lowers your accuracy below the threshold then you do 40 percent less damage like literally um so that's that's another thing we're working on but so far i'm really 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 enjoying uh the melee progression of this character um i don't know if i'm gonna keep the strike wheel here i really feel like i don't need to keep this but if I am going to end up pathing towards Wrecking Ball down here, then I have to keep this. Um, so again, currently I'm path like this. And the reason I went here is because this is a 12% accuracy node and it doesn't really feel wasted. I mean, technically, I guess I could put a point into like a 12% accuracy node here, but I don't crit. So this is literally useless. And I cannot really go here efficiently unless I just bite the bullet and put a point here but I just don't really want to do that. Something else I was trying to figure out is if I can manage to end up getting percent accuracy somewhere else, maybe it'll be an annoyed option. I don't have anything annoyed yet. I could potentially come here and grab utmost might and strength stack, not for a lot, but you know, for basically like three to four points, I could get, I don't know, 150, maybe, maybe a little more than 150 strength. And that it is in itself, actually, it would be more than 150. It'd be probably like 200. Not right now, but when I get more strength. Because you have like 15 and 15 is 30. 30 plus 40 is 70. Then you get 8%. And then the mastery would give me like over 50 strength as well. That gets converted into two times the amount of accuracy. And I don't know how long I'm keeping undeniable for, but at the moment I kind of need it. So that node would basically end up giving me a shit ton of flat accuracy but I would still need percent accuracy to scale. So that's kind of what we're trying to figure out right now because I would like to get like 6,000 life, right? And uh, I want more than 6,000 accuracy because the problem is if I get hit with Enfeeble, Enfeeble lowers your accuracy. So I can't really just be like Enfeeble immune. Uh, so that would be annoying rolling over specifically Enfeeble maps, but I guess that's also life. Anyway, we're trying to like figure everything out still, but I'm really liking the character. It has been a lot of fun. Um, so now we're on the goal of basically stacking spell suppression so we can feel really tanky in red tier maps, but that's pretty much about it. So just to kind of cover my character, I've got endurance charge on melee stun, bone shatter, brutality, melee physical, ruthless, um, war banner, maim, ancestral protector, and precision. I know that you can do the double strat here where you can basically have like the uh, multi totem to have war chief totem and protector totem. At the moment, I don't really feel it's necessary, so I'm leaving it alone. Uh, I also need more links, but that's where we get an extra two on our chest piece. 
Uh, I've got here my Castwind Damage Taken. So it's Warlord's Mark, Castwind Damage Taken, Molten Shell, and Life Tap. Um, this is all set up correctly, right? Yeah. Then I've got in my boots, Leap Slam, Faster Attacks, Determination, Blood Rage, and then Divine Blessing, Pride, Life Tap, Ancestral Cry. Another cool thing is if I can manage to get much better gear, I could probably completely drop Precision and then just run Grace. Because in the end, Precision is only giving me 700 flat accuracy, which also gets scaled off of percent increased aura effect. But 700 flat accuracy, like you can get like 400 accuracy on a piece of gear. So honestly, it would be such a crazy upgrade to be able to get rid of Precision and just instead run Grace, because that would be the trade-off is I drop the increased effect here, switch the increased effect to uh, mono reservation efficiency and then I just literally run grace and then we'll be very very thick but the problem is I'll still be weak against spell damage so before I do any of that I have to get spell suppression so anyway that's pretty much the character hope you guys had a, a wonderful time hope you guys enjoyed yourselves uh we're gonna continue to progress um and yeah I'll see you guys on the live stream today so if you guys like the video please feel free to like share and subscribe and don't forget to catch me streaming live every day but Sundays at twitch.tv slash box. Take care. Have a wonderful time, everybody.